Ryan here, Texas United Realty. I'm going to show you a quick uh, startup of getting a listing agreement going. First, I like to go to HAR and I like to put in my address at the at the middle here. Um, sold as far as you can go out, nine 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 days uh, for sold. Hit search. Um, property comes up as this. Probably find the most recent one. Um, if you haven't seen the property yet, this will give you kind of a good idea of what it looked like at one point. Obviously, you need to see it again because that could change. But it gives you a good idea if there's any attachments. You can go there, see the old seller's disclosure, maybe see the age of the roof. A lot of information you can dig up. But the main thing is I like to hit the tax ID number or uh, this tax icon here. Either one. Either one doesn't matter. If you can't find on MLS, you can go to the tax. I like to use the matrix tax and you can search it. Just search the address. The main thing I need here is I need the tax ID number or the partial ID number, the one with the dashes, because I'm going to need it. So, sorry, that's my paperless pipeline. So I go to, I log into my, um, my um, transaction desk which I like to use Transaction Desk, by going uh, into HAR, and I like to go to the side dashboard where it says Transaction Desk. Click that. Go to Tools, Third Party, Transaction Desk. That brings me over to here. I like to go ahead and hit Create Transaction. This is where the Transaction Desk is going to win you over if you're not already doing Transaction Desk. Uh, name. Um, I like to name it the address of the property, uh, which was nineteen oh six Ash Forest. It's just for your record, so you know when to go back to it. Template. It's a listing. Even if it's a lot, you're going to do listing template residential one to four. Um, but it is a house, so I will also use that. Why is it? My um my Mac likes to shoot off different uh suggestions <laughs> uh and rename things. Okay. Source. Um I don't want to use the MLS number because it's gonna pop up the old person's um listing information. Um and not mine because I don't have it in the MLS yet because I'm just now doing the listing agreement. So I'm going to use the tax. If I was writing up an offer on this property, then I would do the buyer template and I would use the MLS number. It is Harris County. If it's not already labeled, you need to pick the correct county. I'm the listing agent. If you're not a listing agent, you need to click something else. I am the listing agent. You definitely want to have that box checked and hit create. Okay, here's the good news. It's going to pop up all the information that I need. Also, we're going to use this DA checklist so we make sure all of our things that we need is in here. Okay, so if you need the checklist, go to Documents, and there is an updated checklist right there. So now I'm gonna use my right-hand side to navigate this. I'm going to hit forms and all my forms should be in here unless there's something like a on-site sewer or something that's a little, a little bit different for your property. You also want to include a T47 to remind yourself to get that signed and notarized if the seller can find a survey and the notice of mud, um, municipal utility district. Um, municipal is not needed in the form um, anymore because I, so when you want to add a form, I don't even know how it's spelled anymore because we don't um, use it anymore. You search it, like information about brokerage services. Just type in information 
and then all the forms that have information are going to pop up in it. Information. Okay. So if you check it and hit add, it'll add it to the bottom. So I'm going to follow this checklist to make sure we don't need the DA request yet because we don't know uh, what the sales price is because we haven't even put it on the market. Information about brokerage services, listing side, correct. General information and notice to a buyer. Yep, seller side. Information about property insurance. Yep, flood. Yep, a li residential listing agreement. That's the one that you, we need to go over and fill out. Um, right to sell, MLS printout. I don't have it on MLS yet. Tax report. I just showed you what the tax re uh, records are. Um, when we don't have it under contract yet, but I do need them to fill out a seller's disclosure. And there's the MUD. Now we go to the MUD's website to find the MUD. I'm going to do another video on that. Um, you want to go get with your local title company that's near this property and tell them that you have a contract uh, listing that's coming up and that you need the MUD disclosure. And they'll send you to the MUDs website unless you want to do some digging and find it. I'm also going to do a video on the MUD where there's some links that I found that you can actually search the MUD. So the, the water notice has to come from the website of the MUD now instead of this form that's changed. I'm going to do a video on that. But it's actually easier because we don't have to fill it out anymore. It, but I go to my local title company and they almost always find the form for me or they send me a link to find it, which I have a couple of links that would be good that I'm going to share with you. So I'm not going to add the, the mud form. The seller's disclosure should be already on here. Yep. And uh, there's this house is not built before um, 1978, so I don't need the lead-based paint. It doesn't have a septic. I already added the T47 but that does need to get notarized. So I typically don't have that signed right now. It's not an intermediary because I don't even have an, a buyer for it yet. And it's not a condo. I don't have an addendum. It's not a referral. And I don't have these things. And after closing, obviously I'm not even got a contract yet. So I don't need that yet. So I have everything that I need. Um, the cool thing is, is you just click it And if it's not filled out, you need to go ahead and fill it out. But most of this stuff is going to be filled out already. When you're ready to exit, the form always saves your work. Hit save and exit. So if I'm doing a residential listing agreement, I'm going to just click it. It already has the names from the tax records. So if you need to change that, just, just change. You can, you can still click on it and change things. Um, add in the client's information. Finish filling out your information. It usually leaves the section, uh, the uh, addition out for some reason, I've noticed. So that's easy. We go to the tax records. Legal description is right here. Lot seven, block six, copy, and paste. Okay, exclusions, this is really important. You need to find out from your seller what they intend on keeping that's attached to, to the property. And that could include the land as well as the house. So a basketball goal, if they wanna take it, needs to be written here. Curtains, blinds, even if they wanna take the fridge, I usually put it in here because I get it, it's not part of the real estate, but it just clears the things up that they want to take their fridge with them when they move. Um, a built-in fridge actually is included, but most fridges aren't built in. Um, fixtures, um, oftentimes I find mounted uh, TVs to be something that they wanna take. And I get it that the TV is on the mount that's on the wall, but it's still attached to the real estate. So just be clear in your listing and your listing agreement 
especially on the MLS, what all the exclusions are. If they want to take the TV and the TV mount, I'm going to say exclusions, TV and TV mounts that are attached to the wall in the living room, kitchen, uh, kitchen, bedroom. Oftentimes security cameras are big. They want to take those. Ring doorbell cameras. They want to take those. All has to be listed as an exclusion on the listing agreement, on MLS, and most importantly, the contract. Oh, okay. Is it or is it not in a homeowner association? What the list price is? That's when you ran your CMA and y'all discuss what you wanted to list it for. Uh, I do beginning on the date that I want to start the listing of the property. And then, which would be for me today. And then I do six month listing agreements. Let me see. Okay. There's our total commission. That doesn't tell you what the other agent gets yet. So not yet. I usually do a 90 day protection period. Harris County, because that's where our office is, not where the property is. And this is a, an, a another catch point. If you plan on getting this filed, uh, meaning you already have your um, your picture scheduled and you're ready, kind of ready to go, it says you need to have it within in the MLS within five days of the listing period. So whenever this begins. So if you want to start your listing so that you can start conducting you know, your walkthrough, your videos and things like that, and pictures, you do need to have an agreement in place because you certainly don't want to be doing all that without uh, having a listing agreement uh, in place. So then I would just uncheck this box if you're not ready and check B and then just put it, say it'll be on an MLS at a later date whenever you think that it will be ready for pictures, whether the clean out needs to be done or a maid service or your pictures will be scheduled later. Um, so make sure you just check the appropriate box for when it will actually go on MLS. Um, remember, you cannot put the sign in the yard until it is on coming soon, at least on the MLS. So it has to be active or coming soon on HAR before you can put the sign in the yard. If you have a listing agreement in place with the date that's today and they have and it's signed then you can go ahead and put your lockbox on the door and start getting your pictures and start getting you know collecting the survey from them and the t47 and of course the seller's disclosures and start getting everything ready but you can't put the sign in the yard until the um it's on mls is coming soon which means it's not allowed to be shown yet. So you can do coming soon if you're still getting it ready. I would advise you to at least put up one picture of the front of the property. You can even use your phone for that one while you're getting your other pictures done. Um, so the sign cannot go in the yard till it's at least in coming soon or active on your MLS, which is our HAR. Okay, I'm about done. It's already got the scheduling companies on there, um, which everybody should use HAR Showing Smart because it's free if you're a member of HAR. Um, the MLS, the other participant, if they're rep being represented by a broker, they get 3%. Uh, that's what I do. So, intermediary. Um, so this is if they approve that an intermediary can, or if they're allowing intermediary status. And the tricky one, um, typically they don't, they want it on MLS, so they don't, they won't want those checked. Typically your property is going to get be approved for those type of conditions, unless um, other ones are allowed by the seller or the property. And let's see, the tricky one here is going to be you want to check the addendums that's over here on your um, your checklist. But the trickiest one is going to be under I, if they're a foreign person or not. You want to find that out from them because they could be subject to foreign tax if they sell the property. Um, and they're considered 
what this art, what this paragraph is as a foreign person. Uh, so that could be some major implications. So that needs to be asked. 100%. Okay, that's really all I wanted to go over because I wanted to make this video short. Remember to hit save and exit. When you have all your addendums filled out, um, you do. The cool thing about this is if you want them to include this in the listing packet, it already has the bubbles in place when you go to do the, the e-signing. So to do that, I, I don't like to check them unless I'm just doing one, you know, maybe I'm just sending them one or two forms. I'll do that and then I'll go to my basket, kind of like you're shopping on Amazon. Or you want to send it to like me to review. So you might check that and hit the basket if you're my mentee or to your mentor. You would, so let's do this again. You would just simply check which one you want your mentor to review or ones check it, hit the basket like you're on Amazon and then hit the PDF and then save it to your computer and then email it to your mentor. But if I'm going to have them sign it, I'm going to go to the right hand side. I don't need to check them. I'm going to hit signings. I'm going to add a signing. I think it was called Ash. What was it called? Man, I'm already forgetting what it's called. Ash Forest. I just uh, rename. It's making you make a label for your signing. So just, again, the property address is fine. And now the cool thing is you can add your documents. So you can add them all by just clicking add. But I'm not finished with this yet, so I'm not going to do that. And the other important thing is, again, start from the right-hand side and go down, work your way down. Signers, you want to add your signers. And you can add it from the transaction. Now, just check them. One thing I did forget to say, I'm going to go back, is the other important thing you want to do, I want to go back into my, oops, Nope, I don't want to save it, but I do want to go back into my, hit the speedometer, go back to your transaction and hit, um, this is the forms. I forgot to tell you, hit, hit uh, contacts. I usually work from top to bottom. So I broke my own rule and you want to, um, if it's in here, you want to click them and you want to add the email or this is how you add their name. And then you, of course, you hit add to address book. So that's it for now. We're going to uh, just let that be the lesson for the day.